let's finish off doing the planking all the way um, up to the top now what it wants you to do is from this point here right we want to measure from this point here 210 millimeters and just make a little mark there and simply you want to then plank all the way across um, three more new rolls rows going up from there um, what I personally did is I did go off and I really did sort of um, sort of give me a lot of extra um, wood and space this end so I don't have to you know it's a lot easier to cut away than it is to add um, and at which point um, what we want to do is from this point then we wanted to measure 158 millimeters and then again you know we go up another three planks of wood so that was rather simple and I didn't really wanted to show that because you know as I say that was rather simple um, however we have now come to um, this end of the planking where we've if, if you remember I decided to go with let's sort of you know make up our little mask here and you know cut it all in one go rather than what the instructions want you to do which was to you know keep getting your template out you know and each plank of wood that you put across there you cut it to size you know it's a lot of faffing around when we can just simply come along and um, just do this now so what we have is um, we have I do believe it is 25 6 7 yeah it's the the um, the front part of our rib 27 here we want to line that up just there and then this little bit just in here uh, maybe we could just sort of bring you in a little bit uh, this little bit here which I do believe is what's that 27 28 29 uh, 30 the rear end of rib 30 you want our template to just line up with that just nicely in there uh, and also you want the bottom of our template to nicely line up right with the lowest plank of wood that we've got on here so you get those all lined up and then what should happen is this should all be good to make our little template so I'm just gonna slightly remove this bit of masking tape it is good to get out a bit of masking tape just to hold this down and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna nice and easily just simply let's draw in our lines right and this should be you know um, as accurate as we can get it right, and there we go we then should be able to just remove this and we've got our template all drawn up here right then so with this all done um, now in the instructions it's a little bit strange and I did kind of um, you know I couldn't exactly you know find out what that was sort of word in here so I'm gonna kind of play it safe let's just maybe get you a bit on camera just here I'm gonna play this safe right and um, what the instructions sort of say is something to do with when it comes to about here to sort of only cut it to the lowest um, point of the template or something like that it was a little bit complicated to sort of understand so I'm going to play it safe as I say and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, cut it sort of here so I'm going to sort of like cut all this out right and then just cut this part out as well and I'm going to leave this here it doesn't really matter you know we've got it drawn in it's drawn there we can cut it at any point during this build so we can sort of when we get to the stage where uh, we're putting all this um, rear stuff in which is really really some cool stuff when we actually get to the point of actually putting this stuff in we can see how it fits how it goes um, and then we can sort of make that decision of you know do we actually need to cut um, that piece the way ever it needs to be cut so I'm gonna play it like that so with a um, you know a relatively new blade on here it is um, relatively actually what you want to do um, you want to try and keep it as straight as we can I'm just trying to get my ruler just here off camera get in our ruler right we want to 
um, place our blade on the, um, the one end of the loin, butt up the ruler to our blade, and then with the other end of the ruler, right, we want to sort of loin that up with our pencil loin, right, and we just then want to just draw that in. It's really hard to do this and try and keep you on camera. Right, so I'm just trying to line this up again, getting my blade in, then lining up the ruler with the pencil line. And then this way we get a, you know, a relatively straight cut on that. And then what we simply do is we just keep on sort of dragging it because we've sort of made a bit of a trench already. Right, so we've already, we're already there and we just keep on sort of dragging that along All right and what will eventually happen is it will eventually cut away and basically fall off and the same with this little bit up there so i'll do that off camera um, and keep on dragging that but th this is what you basically end up with as you can see nice straight cut line um, which you don't wouldn't really get a nice straight line like that if you cut each and each and individual plank as you went along because we've done it in one it comes out a lot more nicer uh, and neater um, so hopefully you like that um, next up I do believe we're going to sort of start now working down the hall with the planking Right, well, before we move along with um, actually going down the plank with the bottom, we want to protect the top, so I'm going to have to now turn this over. So, um, nice bit of polystyrene, just like it says in the instructions, and what we want to do is basically just make a quick sort of mark on here, some sort of a mark, as like a template of some sort. All right nice quick easy mark and then i'm just going to be using oh this is like years old this is um from games workshop but you can get this um sort of like a polystyrene cutter from a lot of places you can go out and spend a lot of money and get really cool ones um you yeah, know it's up to you or you could just sort of like cut it but it really does go like a knife through butter for any of your sort of polystyrene cutting Hopefully you're just seeing this here. There we go, it doesn't have to be extremely neat. There we go. Cut through, absolutely lovely. And then we and then we can basically get our piece in here and we can adjust it as much as we like, which I suppose that's not too bad. You know, it doesn't have to look pretty. Just enough to sort of hold that in. Right, and then just getting out um, some, I don't know, 16 mil tape. Right, and we can just wrap this around. You know, make it nice and secure. And we also sort of want to do the same with um, any other sort of corners on this, just to sort of make sure we're not going to sort of knock it and ruin it, you know, because this is, you know, taking us a fair bit of time. All right, so get some Tamiya masking tape out. And as I say, with all the little corners, you can just sort of, you know, tape these in as well and sort of, you know, maybe come along with a, a layer or two or three just to make sure this is all going to be nice and good and, um, you know, give it a little bit of protection. So I'm just going to, you know, get all this sort of nicely protected. If you want to whack a bit more polystyrene on, which I might do, um, just to make sure, um, you know, do that if you wish. So moving along with um, starting on the underside, um, as you can see, I've just added um, some polystyrene a bit more um, just at the end here and just at the front. Um, that is where it's gonna be sitting on the table. I've even used our little um, styrene cutter there to sort of put grooves inside of these as well so that um, our model basically, 
um, sits on these rather rather well hopefully you've just seen there because um, you want to keep that protected now at the front um, I have moved the lung with it and as you can see with um, the ones that's got nails in it that I have um, started moving down I've got at least four rows down the bottom side of the hole here um, now we're supposed to be doing drop planks and I wanted to show you how to do that um, but my build um, according to instructions is um, is gone in a way that um, is unlikely but you know that's the way my builds ended up going because each build's different um in in, in sort of like the work because i mean we're doing this by hand so each build's different so mine's gone a bit of a different way so i'll be doing probably the the dropper planks later on through the build but for now um it's just standard um you know we just cut it to length bend it round with the the bending irons and then we just taper it at the end, hopefully as you've just seen there. Um, so we can then move along, if we just move along to the rear. Um, with the rear, we're gonna be uh, really sort of bending around uh, this sort of corner here, which is gonna be rather tricky and some um, pretty hard bending, but that's what we're gonna be doing there. But before we do that, we need to fill in, we've got this big, massive gap uh, just there that needs to be filled and um, then the instructions they just say come in and just whack in um, uh, just some filler however um, that is rather a big gap and when you've got big gaps you want to put something a bit more solid in there to hold it so I'm just getting some um, bits of wood here and we're just gonna um, cut a few lengths off right we haven't got to worry too much how um, lung these are because we're not going to really see down there that much and what we want to do we just want to get in a little bit of super glue just a bit in and around there we want to get a bit of glue on our two pieces here All right and then we just want to Hold on, we should probably let that glue a bit first. So I'm just getting some um, some um, super glue activator. In this case, it's from my local um, store, which is Pen Models. Um, but you can get things like Zapper Gap and all those kind of products. Give it just a little bit of a, a squirt there, just to sort of activate that. And then we can um, hopefully put this in here, which is probably a good idea to grab some tweezers quickly all right so we can just lure these in right without sort of like losing them so i'm just going to try and drop that in i'm sort of coming in underneath as well just to stop it from dropping down all right and then we're just going to try and hold that into position maybe get a bit more super glue in there Maybe just push it up from the bottom. Right, and then maybe come in with some activator. Give it a blow to help the activation. And there we go, that gap there now. We've like plugged it with something. I mean, it doesn't look pretty, but you know, the filler's gonna make it look pretty. That is just to, you know, give our filler something to to sort of bind to because I mean really that was just a big hole um, so let's move along with some filler right then just got some uh, white put here from squadron products um, I use this for all my plastic scale modeling and we can use it for this as well what we want to do want to squeeze out probably a nice ample amount here and then we can chop it off with a spatula um, what we want to do is just start spreading that in there right squeeze some more out this is a bit of an old tub so it's slightly on the dry side but we're still good to go right, and you just want to spread this you want to try and dig it in and work it into all those sort of nooks and crannies areas Right, I'm gonna really try and work it in. Um, now this stuff, you wanna leave it to dry for, you know, potentially, I mean, normally about 24 hours, but we're really sort of whacking this in thick here. So I'm kind of thinking, 
Fuck, that is sort of drying up. I'm kind of thinking maybe give it maybe a little bit longer, maybe an extra day um, to allow that to dry. Because what you do get, you do get shrinkage. And that's where, um, as the, um, you know, the white putty dries, um, all that moisture in there dries and it basically becomes less because all that moisture in there is dried away and then you're just left with um, the putty side of it so it does shrink so you could come along fill that in sand it it looks absolutely smooth you could spray over it as well with paint or paint over it and it looks as smooth as anything but you know literally you could be like a couple of weeks down the line and it's shrunk back and you see like a little bit of a dip so uh, you do want to be careful in that sense so you really want to give it time to dry now um, before you do any kind of like you know sanding or or painting over or anything like that because you can have problems later on so i'm just going to like continue filling this in with the spatula right and we want to let that then do some drawing also as a, as a note cellulose thinners is a good good friend for um stuff like our white putty here because it really cleans um, cleans up your spatulas really really well just get a kitchen paper towel here All right it just absolutely cleans that up absolutely lovely very very easily um you know if as well as you're sort of like maybe applying this putty it might dry a bit too quickly which you know it does dry rather rather quickly if we add a bit of that onto the end of our spatula we can sort of like smooth that off slightly rehydrate it maybe clean it up in areas maybe where you don't want it so maybe it's just gone on to as you can see here it's just gone on to a bit of our um, bit of our wood there you can sort of clean that up as well if you give it a bit of a rub All right, it does clean it up where you don't want it as you can see there which is rather rather good so it is good for that kind of kind of stuff cleaning up rehydrating um, you know this 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 tube here I need to get a new one it's sort of drying up on me but you could sort of mix it in with cellulose thinners a bit and sort of give it a bit more new life but I'll probably go ahead and buy a new one right so while that's all drying now I want to sort of like um, jump into something a little bit different get away from HMS victory a bit and that is um, let's work on our anchor as you can see here now first off what we're going to want to do is sort of do a little bit of cutting and trimming um, first we have a little piece here um, which we can just get out a saw right this is a nice easy cut here we can just easily saw into this as just a little tab just in the middle there right and we can just saw through that very very easily yeah no real issue there and actually while we're at it um, we do need to find the middle um, with this and you know that little tab there is a great indication of where the middle is so uh, st stuff it I'll just um, use a sanding stick here as a template right and what we simply want to do here is just line this up where that um, little tab was because that was nice and dead center and we can just give that um, a little mark there and we line them both up so then we know that you know we've got the center for both of them and we'll need that later later on in the build and then we can just come along um, I haven't got everything out this time for some strange reason but yeah we come along get a um, sanding stick and we just want to then sort of tidy up that little tab there right nice simple little sand in there starting off with a bit of a coarse going into a bit of a medium one there should be enough and same with this one here as well get them sanded away also we want to get out a couple of different files right now with the files i've got some cheap sort of nasty ones of you know i've ended up getting free with this or that um um, but you know we want to sort of use these for um, our anchor here because actually I don't know how well 
you can see that on camera there you go um, we've got this sort of join line that goes uh, between here um, it's quite nasty you don't really want to be seeing that it does go all the way around right that's where it kind of goes into the mold and basically you've got two halves of that anchor they bring the two molds together fill it with um, some, some some sort of a metal that used to be lead now I, oh, I forgot what it was called again now um, but yeah you know you, you end up with these sort of seam lines going all the way around it's more notably here and when I start sanding actually with our little fo metal foil here you'll actually see sort of how bad it is right because we've because it's already got black paint on here you can sort of see you know that in the center there it really is um, got a bit of a, a raise in there so just sanding this back again doing the other side as well you can see where the seam line is and you just want to sand at it and sand at it until you are left with nothing but silver which is just like I've just done there um, now with um, some Games Workshop files that I've got, these are a bit more better quality. Um, you know, they do cost a bit more, but they are good for sort of like finishing this off. Because what we've got in here, we've got all sorts of like um, chisel marks left over, sort of like lots and lots of scratches. You can probably see all those scratches there that's been left on there. Um, but if we come in with um, these sort of more expensive ones, Right, they will sort of, you know, sand this to a sort of nice, sort of metally polished sort of finish where we haven't got all these scratches on them. Um, it does take a bit of time to sort of, you know, sand through this. Um, but we've also got the curves as well. We want to use the different shapes because, you know, we have got a bit of a curve going on just inside here as well and going around here. Right, we want to sort of really sort of try and sand through that using the curvature of our nail file here. All right, so we go nicely with the curvature, and as you can see there, we're sanding that through nicely, and we can work our way along this nice lung bit here. Again, you're probably seeing that centre bit of seam line there when we sort of sand away the paint first. Right, and we just want to work our way around, sort of really sort of getting rid of the big bits with some cheap old nasty ones, and then with your more expensive, more finer um, sort of um, sanding sort of, oh, the cold now, sanding foils, we just sand away and sort of smooth that off and get it all looking nice and smooth. <laughs> Thank you.